Welcome everybody. This is Greg Anderson at the Crown Council. Our webinar presenter today is Charles Loretto. Charles is an investment advisor representative of Kane Waters and Associates. He began his career with Kane Waters in 2001 and continues to play a very critical role for them in developing new business. One thing he has told me is having a business and personal financial plan is a must, and if you don't have a plan, then the IRS is going to have a plan for you. So you'll find that Charles not only knows his business, but he knows the key decisions that every dentist needs to make to protect their financial future. He's got his finger on the pulse of the young dental generation. He's spoken to over 17,000 students and residents, and he lectures to dentists about all points of their career from those just starting out in business to those who are transitioning to the next phase of their lives. You'll find him a straight shooter. He knows dentistry, has a passion for helping dentists take advantage of uh, being a business owner. And as a young dentist, which is what this presentation is designed uh, to spotlight, you will find uh, him a wealth of knowledge. We believe that a financial advisor is a critical part of your practice team and Charles is the very best in the business at that. So Charles, welcome, and uh, the screen and the time is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Greg. It's been a pleasure to know you over the years, and uh, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, visit to this uh, young uh, dental uh, group. And um, it's, it's my, my passion uh, today to give you uh, the best I can, and for those of you that uh, own uh, your dental practice today, uh, to have you very excited about that decision, and for many of you that don't own your business at this point, uh, to hopefully motivate you and to allow you to think uh, differently. Um, as Greg mentioned, I've had a, a chance to speak uh, to now 49 dental schools all across uh, this country on this message. Obviously the message has changed over uh, over the 10 plus years that I've been you know lecturing to dental uh, students and schools and residency programs and state and national meetings and this is kind of my one little tiny uh, niche of making sure that I get this message uh, across. I, I speak to a little over a, a thousand uh, people a year just by meeting them on phones uh, and uh, at dental meetings and a couple of thousand students a year just at the school level. So uh, this is uh, some exciting times and uh, today uh, we are going to focus basically on what it's like uh, to be an associate uh, working actually for uh, corporate, what that looks like. Uh, the associate that works in a private practice, uh, we would look at another opportunity to where if you were to associate and then become a partner in a corporate model uh, practice and what those numbers uh, would look like. Uh, we'll look at becoming a partner, um, you know, from like an associate to partner in a private practice. And we're also going to look at what the options and numbers are that would support you if you were to purchase uh, a practice. Uh, every lecture that I give, I like to give a little bit of love to uh, to these guys. So uh, the beautiful girl there uh, on the uh, right is my daughter, we're at the Grand Canyon this year, and uh, uh, there's a picture in Orlando uh, with the three of us and then my son there at uh, the World Cup you know, last year. Uh, a, a, a once older uh, man once told me that uh, life is really quick and take some meaningful uh, vacations and take lots of pictures. And so uh, that's my advice from a parent standpoint. Also from a parent standpoint is these guys are very uh, difficult. <laughs> There's a lot of work that's involved in this. I do I do recommend surrounding yourself uh, and picking the right uh, place uh, to live. I was on a phone call uh, just this afternoon and a couple uh, periodontists and a general dentist and uh, honestly they're trying to pick the, the place that makes a little bit more money but they have no ties to that area and I've already spoken to the wife about this and now I'm back on the phone with the husband and I can't motivate them enough. It's not the right spot. Neither one have any ties to this location at all uh, in this particular state. And they're looking at three other places. It makes no sense for two dentists and even a specialist to live in a place 
go to the place where you have family because you need family and friends to go down this road of being uh, a parent. So uh, first slide is, can you read that? Uh, I'm a 47-year-old guy, and uh, once you get to be 47, things in your body start to give out. Uh, one of those things is my eyes. So even with my readers on about four or five inches, I don't know, I guess it's about a foot uh, from my screen, I cannot read that slide. Uh, but when you click to the next slide or put your your big, uh, maybe your loop saw, maybe your nindonis, you, you look through a scope, uh, you are able to see uh, what they don't see. So I want to focus on they. Who is they? They uh, could be a corporate dentistry. They uh, could be uh, a CPA that focuses just on reviewing uh, a, a tax planning or giving tax advice for a dentist. They could be somebody like the Crown Council that just you know is an advisory you know group that specializes in sharing knowledge of what's working in dentistry. They could be. Uh, uh, tops, you know, a, a practice management group is coming in and telling you various things. They are, they are lots of different people. And, and what I would tell you, if you look at people that are successful, they are surrounding themselves with the right they. And it's, I think it also applies in our personal lives as well, is to make sure that you're surrounding yourself on the personal uh, uh, front with the right people. It's actually a, a sermon at our church. And, and, and so it got to me to thinking of they also in, in, in business. So I want to discuss they a lot uh, in this approximately 45-minute uh, uh, presentation. So when you think about corporate, uh, you know, what they're doing is they're coming into all these dental schools around the country and they're attacking and basically playing off the fear of the young dentist. And the, the problem with the young dentist today is their debt. The debt is unbelievable at 300 and 400 and 500, 600. The most I've seen for any couple is $1 million. The highest I've ever seen for one individual is $700,000. And interest rates roughly in the 7, 8, and 9 percent range depending on uh, what amount of debt uh, that they have. They understand that there's a lack of business training that is, is taught at these levels, certainly it was there was not business training five years and ten years and even twenty and thirty. It's been a complaint of the dental industry and the medical industry is not business training. A little comedy in our end is business people that you are all going to school to learn business. Actually, you're going to school to learn dentistry, but the reality is you all own small businesses, but you're not taught business. So. Uh, they understand that, meaning corporate, you understand that as well. And so, uh, you know, what we're trying to do in this, uh, you know, part of our lives is making sure that, you know, you can surround yourself with people that are best of class that can help uh, get you to the next uh, level. They definitely know this debt. They know the pain. They know the millennial mentality that is out there, which means you, you want to work in small groups. There's a, a fear of, of taking on these, these big debts. And so, uh, you know, there's not a lot of uh, over-the-top drive that says I want to work 60 and 70 hours in a week. And this is not me, you know, uh, uh, preaching uh, that. It's just uh, books have been written around approximately 80 million uh, millennials that, that are out there. Um, you know, the steps to change, you know, our view. I, I first, I get you to believe that this is an unbelievable opportunity for you, which I absolutely think that it is. Uh, the the banks in the industry, they love you, okay? Uh, they absolutely love you um, because of your high uh, success rate. And so, um, you know, they're, they're constantly coming after you and trying to offer these, these dental loans. And so there's plenty of money out there. Um, and, and I'll spend some time on what those banks are looking for here in just a second. Uh, but when you think about corporate, the one thing when they first got into the industry, they used to buy practices, and then um, and now they've gotten so good at running them that uh, what they're doing now is is just starting uh, brand new ones. And, and the reason that they uh, these practices start and are so successful, they understand demographics. They understand that there's maybe a, a population to dentist ratio of 4,000 
uh, of people to want to not see. It screams to them as they, meaning corporate, that they know it's going to be successful by putting that practice in there. They know how the office design is going to look like. They're, known they're not going to build some 5,000 square foot, too big office. They're not going to put nine or ten chairs in there from the beginning. They know how to set these practices up. They understand external marketing, internal marketing. They have the technology all in place. They have the practice consultants that are part of this package, and they know how to make the phones ring and, and how to get the patient to accept treatment. And, and the, the crazy thing is, is they all stole it from you, you the dentist, maybe, meaning uh, the history of dentistry. They stole it from this generation one generation before, 20 years or 30, they're just taking what's working and repeat. That's really all a consultant is, is they're simply repeating what they know that works. And so that's what they, uh, corporate, is doing. This slide is to show you the math because I think it really comes down to some really basic stuff. You've gone to school, you, you maybe did a GPR, Maybe you're even a, a specialist. Whatever your circumstances are, you've got to go to work and you've got to produce out of these chairs. And so you have this doctor chair and it typically in a general practice, you may have four chairs that you're operating out of and you're going to be working either as an associate in a practice and or you're going to be working with corporate in a practice. But in these two doctor chairs, they're going to keep you busy. And in this example, I'm going to show you that you're doing about 60,000 doctor production a month. And that equates to 720,000 a year. You're going to get paid somewhere around 30%, somewhere around 25%, somewhere around $200,000 a year to do doctor work out of one and two chairs. Now, at the same time, you've got to, you've got to check hygiene. Hygiene is chairs number three and four. And in general, a general statement is that about 75% of the practice is going to be doctor, and about 25% of the practice is going to be hygiene. Or to say it differently, roughly, this is a million dollar practice, and roughly the associate's doing about 750,000 of collections, and roughly the hygiene's doing about 250 of collections, or about a million dollars. And so my first point I want to try to make to you is as an owner, you're going to make twice as much money than the associate. Okay? So simple math here. If you go to work for somebody, you're doing $60,000 a month, you're basically running a million-dollar business. If you would run the million-dollar business, how much would you make? Roughly about 40%, 400 versus 200. Say it another way. You work about 200 days a year. Every day you're an owner, you make $1,000 more a day. So I always say that you make about twice as much as an owner. It's not always exactly, but it's something to, when you look at the math, it generally kind of works out. Another point I want to make is the fact you've got to think long term. Okay, We have to think that we're going to run out of crown press. You're going to run out of sinus you know, lifts if you're a, a, a periodontist. You've got to think about an extraction that uh, you're going to run out as an oral uh, surgeon or a um, you know a, a phase one you know for for the orthodontist you're going to run out of what you do I'll run out of airline uh, flights to dental schools and giving lectures uh, I'm going to run out of what I do eventually as well and I have the same plan that, that you have which is I got to get a check ultimately I got to somehow get a check one day into the future so. I'm going to spend a couple of seconds here to teach you the importance of having a financial roadmap that you got to follow. Now, I'm going to assume that my, uh, that my group here is today is young. So I have to assume that we're 30-year-olds. I have to assume you have nothing saved. I have to assume that uh, we have to uh, have an inflation uh, uh, rate that's out there, meaning that the cost of goods and services are slowly increasing over time. This example, I'm using 2.5% because that's our uh, kind of an average historic number. I got to think that my money is going to somehow compound at some level. I have to have a target of 6%, 7%, 8%. This, this is your plan. This is not my plan. You could be older than 30. Uh, inflation may drop and it may be running a little bit less this year and maybe it goes up over the next 10 years. This is your plan you're going to have to adjust. You got to start saving and thinking about the benefits of saving uh, tax deferred. 
And you got to also think about that one day in the future, you're going to run out of crown preps. And for uh, the average Cane Waters um, a client, which, you know, Cane Waters is this, this large CPA firm that gives advice to dentists, and uh, we're basically helping with tax planning and pension planning and investment advice and really helping them manage their dental practice. And we have advisors that have these clients that were dentists and now they're retired dentists and they're just living on an amount of money. And right now, uh, that team, you know, you know, when I interviewed them for, for this uh, a presentation and previous presentation, they said their team of retired clients, they're spending about twelve to $15,000 a month at retirement. So you've got to think ahead. I'm going to run out of crown preps. Yes, uh, I'm going to probably run out when I'm in my 60s. That's 30 years from now. So if you know that people today are spending about 15000 in today's dollars, how much is that going to be tomorrow dollars? It's $30,000 a month is what you'll need to be thinking you're going to spend 30 years from now. So 30 times, so that's, Charles, I'm going to need 360 grand a year to live on? Yes, approximately based on this, these numbers. So then how much am I going to need to save to get a $360,000 check? Roughly $8.5 million. And so this plan is very difficult. It's very difficult just to wake up in a 30-year period to get there. And you're going to be able to do it when you own the business. And if you save approximately $70,000 a year, which coincidentally happens to be the magic number of about how much you can save if you own a small business between you and a spouse, and you do that over a 30-year period, you have a target rate of return of 8% in this example, you get there. And you know, I'll, I'll show you in a second. It's not about saving $70,000. It's about I got to own. And so. Um, I want us to, we're going to come back and reiterate a lot of these points because they're really, uh, really important. But I want you to be able to see that, oh, wow, I'm going to need a lot of money to prepare. So what vehicle is going to get me there? This slide here is about, says your evil is not my evil. So for, for a second, I want you to think what my evil might be. I already know what your evil is. Your evil is if you are a fourth year, it's passing your boards. If you were out of school, it's about making money to pay down debt. And that debt, again, is that $300,000, $400,000 number at the 7% you know, uh, interest rate. But I will tell you that once you're out and you're making money, your evil becomes federal and state taxes. And so at the bottom of this uh, screen, uh, you will see that um, you know, we have a $230,000 income, which is the 200, uh, 2015 um, tax bracket number. So anything that's over $230,000 is taxed at 33% federal. And then for the vast majority of the states in this country, they have a state tax. And so now we're talking about another anywhere between four, five, six to states like California that have you know 11 up to 11% uh, state tax. So this is a big number to think about that every dollar and cent over 230 is roughly taxed at 33 plus of maybe an average state tax of 5% at 38%. So now all of a sudden 38% is, is what I would call our, uh, our evil. Ver that's what my evil is, certainly. And I'll say that the uh, uh, many small business owners that are exceeding that type of income are faced with uh, these big tax uh, tax numbers that are right there that are illustrated. Another key to owning is number one, you get to do the dentistry you want to do. You want to give a somebody a, a new uh, person that, that joins uh, your church or, or joins your, your your temple, and you just want to do something great for them because you even tell that they're literally in pain or maybe they're just not confident in their smile and you just want to be able to do something like that. I think it's unbelievable. I, I think that you have employees in a dental practice. I think you have the ability to, to say, hey, I'm going to give you a 10% raise versus corporate telling you we're only going to do 3% because our corporate profits were this. Sometimes you need to be able to make those uh, decisions. You get to choose the lab. You get to choose the, uh, the supplies. You just basically get to hire and fire at the right time. You're in total, uh, total control. So 
it's one of the things I really like about owning. Now, is there challenges with, with owning? Absolutely. Is it for everybody? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, it, it's certainly not. Um, the point of this illustration and this presentation is just to get you to see kind of both sides. There are definitely complexities of, of running a business. I'm just trying to show you uh, some of the, uh, the positive uh, outcome to this and benefits of actually owning. I took this, uh, these quotes from, from dental meetings. And you know you'll see this. You will make three hundred thousand dollars working at ABC, you know, office three hundred thirty-five thousand. So, what I want you to think about here is how much dentistry will you need to generate to make that kind of money? Okay. So I want us to work backwards. You know, talked about the seventy-five percent of the practice being in doctor and twenty-five percent in hygiene. And so, you know, typically, you know, we discuss that. Uh, you're going to get paid as an associate working in a, a corporate setting or a private setting around this 25 to 30 percent. So if I use 30 percent in this example, then you know you need to produce basically a million dollars of dentistry to get the $300,000 check. So if we add in our hygiene now of about 25 percent of the million dollars, about 350,000. So wow, well, I'm, I'm basically running a million three business. Well, if I run a million three business, what should my overhead be? In general, it should be about 55%. We're managing our business effectively with the right people, the right they around us to manage our business. We should have an overhead of roughly 55%. Or in this example, you should be making around $607,000. So is corporate going to provide a value? Absolutely. Are they going to get lower supplies? Yes, they will. They're going to get lower uh, equipment costs. Absolutely. They're going to help you with management and, and, and uh, retainers for you know, helping you just with, with legal. Absolutely. They are going to help you with a lot of that support. And what I've done in this example is I've actually tried to do my best to figure out what that cost is. And it's you know, maybe 2%, maybe 3%. It's hard dollar costs that are, that are involved. And so we just need to see what and try to measure what that dollar amount is. And that's really what I want us to walk away from and for you to walk away from is just that way as, as different opportunities are presented to you, you can decide for yourself which is the best solution for you. So how does corporate get paid in general? Uh, they get paid anywhere between 5, 10, 15, 16, 17 percent off of the top from a collection standpoint. So for this one, I'm going to say that corporate gets paid 10% off of the top. How's the math work? Million three five uh, with the 55% overhead, there are $607,000 of uh, income uh, before any type of profit uh, distributions or salary paid to my uh, to my owner that's in the practice. Uh, conceptually, this is this this model is a situation where Corporate is maybe another city, state, or far, and you're there basically running this practice, you know, by yourself. Because they, you know, this support is obviously there, uh, phone and email and consultants obviously coming coming in throughout the year and, and helping. Uh, but there's six hundred seven thousand dollars of profit. We pay you as an owner anywhere between twenty five to thirty percent. Uh, this example up at thirty percent. There's three hundred seven thousand dollars of gross profit. Prior to corporate getting paid in this example 10%, they take the cut of 135. There's now a distributable profit between you of 172. You get 300 plus the 86. 386 that that uh, that you would basically you know take home in this environment to be a 50/50 partner uh, with corporate, or basically corporate's benefit is $221,000 of profit. And so if they are providing $221,000 of profit, then that's a good deal. If they're not providing two hundred twenty, dollars it's not a good deal. So it's each individual to, uh, to measure what that, uh, what that value uh, is that's out there. So uh, put the readers uh, back on for the old guy here. Uh, you now get to see what they uh, see. 
let's continue and now talk about going to work in private practice. So once we go into private practice, um, we are going to start looking and analyzing at our opportunities that are out there. So my first uh, set is we come out of school, and my goal is whoever you work for, uh, could be corporate private practice, it doesn't make a difference in my books. I just want you to be busy. That's the number one thing. Just work in a busy practice. We're now going to start saving some cash. And this is where it really makes no sense. So this guy is the speaker, has no idea what he's talking about. I'm actually telling you not to try to pay down debt. I'm telling you to save in a non-interest bearing account with little to no risk, cash. Okay? And the reason is we need you to accumulate roughly thirty or forty thousand dollars of liquidity of just cash so that you look really good to a bank who is going to lend you anywhere between three, four, five, six, seven, a million, million, five, some big crazy numbers. And we need to have cash and we need to have a little bit of experience. So once we got that experience, now we're going to find our dental practice and we're going to own it. And once we own it, if the practice is, let's say, a, a smaller practice, and there's nothing wrong with this either, having maybe a 500000 collection practice, and maybe it makes $150,000. Well, we're still not at the, I need to save money in a pension plan. Okay, We're not at the, uh, taxes are my evil. We are, I need to grow it and, and get this practice uh, more profitable. And so what's interesting is the first $500,000 of work that you do, you may only net, let's say, $150,000. The next $150,000, the next $500,000 that you make, you may make as much as $300,000 on the next five hundred, dollars or to say it differently, the million-dollar practice has the ability to net $450,000. And so that's where it's so important that we got to grow it. And I love... Uh, consultants um, like like Tops. I'm not saying it, it, there's no money going back and forth. I'm an invited guest speaker uh, with with Tops. But I, I think they do a good job. There's great other consultants uh, that are out there in the industry uh, that do good work. But I just like a good consultant that specializes in dentistry. Get these things to grow. Okay, so we grow it. It becomes an, uh, efficient. Number four, we got a vision, we got a plan that we're going to run out of crown preps. Well, that's great. We, we, we're looking into the future, and um, we need good technology to make our, our life and our, our practice life, you know, very uh, easy and efficient. We understand taxes are going to be an evil. We understand that a pension plan, uh, the ability to save roughly seventy thousand dollars a year in a plan that I get a great tax deduction, is my best friend. And then lastly, we're going to pay ourselves. Pay ourselves because now we, we, we're going to pay taxes on it, and we're going to start managing debts that don't make sense. Your dental school debt is one of those. And so uh, most people, if you ask them, what's your six-step plan when you come out of dental school, you know, they're going to put their, instead of step six, uh, it, it's going to be step one. Pay ourselves and pay down debt. That's probably the number one thing I hear from young, uh, young students and, and residents. So, you know, keep in mind, you know, what they, in this case, uh, you know, my, myself and, you know, almost 100 employees uh, between Kane Waters and, and uh, you know, NDP, uh, that's all we're looking at are these individual um, uh, decisions that you're making, try to give our best possible uh, financial uh, solution. So, uh, one of the things that uh, NDP, you know, offers is buyer consulting services. So, anytime you get a a business that you are considering, here are the things that you should be asking for. You know, evaluation, you know, tax returns, uh, profit and loss statements, uh, details how it's going to work with the building or the lease or have a partnership. If he or she's going to be working back in the practice, so you're going to need to get as much information as you can on that practice and then have a they, somebody who specializes in, you know, their field of telling you this is a great Deal. And it's a little self-serving because that's what we do, uh, but there's other great um, CPA uh, firms or uh, dental consulting firms that just specialize in this one niche. And so, uh, as a 
you know, Greg uh, kind enough again to invite me as the speaker in, in today's uh, you know webinar, but as an offering to uh, the Crown Council and their young dentists, uh, one of the things you know said was to you know give them some trials, and so we're going to help you review uh, any uh, deal like this and spend a couple of uh, uh, hours uh, you know with you to make sure that you feel uh, comfortable with what what you're buying. Uh, other uh, keys to success is you got to get to know somebody. You, you, you might be hearing this message and say, "Hey, that sounds great, but I don't have a practice to buy. You know, I'm not in that situation. I've been looking. Okay, I get it. Uh, this uh, I've spoken to thousands of people, and that's you know a lot of the, uh, the frustrations I hear is I just don't have that opportunity. Well, we got to get to know somebody. Okay, and I, I can't tell you how many times in a day that I'm telling people you got to connect with approximately you know, 200 people with, you know, handshakes and, and CVs, letters, cover letters, marketing yourself to communities you know where you want to be, where again, uh, second slide of me and my uh, kiddos, where we want to be. Well, we want to be in, in Plano, Texas. That's where, the, that's where I live and where the school is and friends. So I, I got to have all that. I can't change my area. I'm here. Uh, you need to have this outgoing personality because dentistry is honestly about helping you uh, the outgoing person that's just the bubbly is going to motivate their staff. It's going to be able to uh, motivate uh, the patient on what treatment that they need to uh, implement, you know, or the challenge that they may face. Just being nice to people, uh, have a unique skill set in dentistry. It could be, uh, you know, you could be a fluent in Spanish and, and being a, a Spanish community. You could have, um, you know, molar. Uh, endo experience or implant experience, whatever this may be, have a unique skill set. I think is is very uh, important. Be have the mentality too, just 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 to work uh, hard. Um, we're going to look now at if you work with somebody, what are the numbers that would be there to support you? Meaning, how much dentistry is this practice really going to have to be? doing to support me if I come in as an associate. Um, and number one thing, when you go and meet with these potential owners, you got to love them, okay? I mean, you got to love and respect this established uh, doctor. I mean, uh, you know, you meet him, you feel it, you meet the spouse of the doctor, you just feel that sense of it, that you're appreciated. Um, it's how you're introduced to the staff, you know, um, versus when you don't feel it, it's like it's like you you know I talk about this when you when you're dating, and if you meet somebody and you're just not feeling that love when you first meet them, probably not going to be the one. Uh, but if it, again if you're getting the warm and fuzzies and introducing to all their 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 other close friends and their family and the family meeting you and like oh my god I heard so much about you and and uh, we're really excited to meet you and uh, really taking you in. Okay, this is a really good sign when you're starting to meet these uh, these potential people you're working with. So, you know, the previous slide was talking about getting to know people. You're getting to know them, and then number one, uh, you kind of have that love and respect for them, and you're feeling it on their end too. Uh, and then we need to have the numbers to support you. And so, gross collections on a minimum side, and typically for a GP practice, maybe 850. Ideal or maybe a million too. I'll play with the million dollar number because it's simple math. The million dollar collection practice, again, ideal overhead, 55%. It could hit, could be at 60%. The, the, the point of that is, if the guy or gal who owns this business makes 400, 450 thousand dollars a year, that's a lot of cash. And you want to go work for somebody with a lot of cash. And there's lots of new patients. And um, they're willing to give you a guaranteed salary to come in and make you a partner in two years. And what's cool about these numbers is the million, million two practice with 40 new patients. This business is like a stock, and the stock is flat today without you because there's only so much dentistry that a dentist can do. And all specialists, you can, I can just kind of tell you certain numbers. You know, uh, or, you know, oral surgeon, man, they can do crazy numbers. They can do $2 million, you know, somewhere around a million three for a, in Adonis, they, they start running out of root canals, and and uh, there's uh, all the numbers that you know kind of people have different you know maximums. Maybe a, a GP might be able to do one six one seven you know on their own, but in general, 
about a million, million one, million two is about the max number that a GP is doing by themselves. So by you coming in there and you having that unique skill set and outgoing, hard work ethic attitude, we're going to grow this business. It's actually going to grow quite rapidly. You know, in general, you know, we might expect this thing to grow three to four hundred thousand dollars just in a short time frame. Eight to uh, eighteen months, so twenty-four months is is very uh, attainable. So and now it's going to grow. Now we, we're making more money. It starts to justify the buy-in. Here's some salaries for uh, for you to think about. This B4 is typically coming out of a uh, school are making uh, $90,000 as the base, and AGD or GPR is roughly making about 110, with some type of incentive of roughly, um, you know, 25 to 30 percent over, um, you know, maybe a monthly incentive. So, for example, in, at, at, uh, for a D4, they do maybe more than $25,000 a month. Then uh, we might pay them uh, 30 percent. So, if they did 30,000 a month. Um, then they would get paid basically 30% nine grand versus in this example 7,500 a month or 90,000 divided by 12. If that math makes sense. Um, there are times that you're going to be paid as an independent contractor. I have a lot of questions about this, so just understand. And again, maybe this is a good offer at, at this point as well. If you ever get offered an independent contractor, it's also referred to as the 1099. Uh, we have a spreadsheet to help you understand the amount of Social Security taxes that you're going to pay, and there are a lot, by the way. Uh, and so this slide illustrates that as an employee, you have to pay 7.65% Social Security tax, but in an independent contract, you're actually paying 15.3 twice uh, the amount. So a lot of Social Security taxes that you have to pay is 1099. So if this slide means anything to you because you're being paid 1099 or being offered, uh, you can send us an email and we'll help you walk you through kind of what, uh, what to expect so you don't get caught off guard from a tax tax wise. We joined this practice in a private practice. Now they offer you the 90000 the base, and everything looks good. We really want this practice to support you. We want you to feel the love. You know, the marquee out front needs to not just be about Loretto and how great he is, but it needs to be about Loretto and Smith. The phone needs to be answered, you know, Loretto and the Smith industry. It needs, we need to promote you, okay? We need to introduce you as a, a partner you know, versus, oh, this is my new associate. You just graduated from, uh, you know, Baylor. It, it's, I mean, who wants to work with that guy? You know, we really want to pump you up. Um, and so uh, that, that's all on, you know, from a practice management standpoint, they know how to do that. And so uh, we also are a little bit of the, the they as well. So those are the numbers that would support you if you come in as an associate to now make you to an equity partner. So what we've done is we talked about associated corporate. You've partnered with corporate. Now we've looked at a, a scenario that the million, million one practice with 40 new patients would support you as an associate to make you now as an equity partner in two years. Now the last case we're going to look at is let's just buy a business. And so these are the basic fundamental questions that I would ask when we're going to buy a business. And number one, if you say, hey, hey you spoke to my dental school. Uh, a couple of years ago, and you offered uh, to, to look at these practices. Here's one. I'm going to ask you basic questions. What does it gross? A million bucks. What is it net? 100,000. Can you do the dentistry? What amount of dentistry is the million dollar practice? Well, we discussed it's about 60, 62, 63 thousand dollars of doctor production a month, and then the rest is hygiene. So. That's my question. How much dentistry can you do? If you've been out two years and been doing fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month, then absolutely. If uh, if you're a D4 and you're trying to buy a million dollar practice, you have no money because you haven't yet earned any. Um, you have no experience, and more than likely the bank is not going to lend you seven hundred thousand dollars for this business. So that's going to be a problem. How much you can net after debt service? What is debt service? Debt service is we need to borrow money for this business. In general, business is going to be valued at 75%, 70%, something like that. So the million dollar business is going to be for sale for $700,000, roughly. If the bank gives you seven hundred dollars to buy it, now you have to give them approximately $7,500 a month for the next 10 years, or to say it differently, they give you 700 grand, you give them 90 grand for the next 10 years. 
Now, the business net's 400. Now you have to give the bank 90. You're left with 310. Can you live on that amount of money? Okay, that's the question. Maybe the doctor's staying in the business. Okay, how many days a week is he going to work? What you know? What's he been producing on a, a daily, hourly basis? Let's calculate. And let's say that what's budget? He work one day a week, and let's say he gets paid 600 a day, and now all of a sudden it's he's going to do about I don't know three thousand dollar a day or something. Then uh, we can equate he's going to make you know some big number of fifty thousand dollars a year, a hundred, you know, whatever the number is by days, let's figure that out. So now we went from four hundred to three ten to maybe paying the doctor, I don't know, sixty thousand a year. Now we're left with two fifty. Can you live on that money? This is the scenario that we're going to go through as we buy uh, this business. So let's look at a business together. This one does a million two. There's six ops. The net revenue is six fifty. And the price of the practice was established way back in the day, two years ago, at six hundred thousand dollars. Buyers been out for two years. Practice is really outdated. Need new equipment, and we're going to need to borrow at least two hundred thousand dollars to get this practice up to the standards that we really, really want. Buyers producing sixty thousand dollars of doctor production in four days. Practice was doing eight hundred. Now it's doing a million two. What do you do? Is this a no-brainer that we're going to borrow? The price of the practice six hundred plus another two hundred thousand dollars. Now we're going to borrow eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't know. Let's run the math. If you borrowed eight hundred thousand dollars at ten years, roughly five percent, your payment's going to be roughly around this eighty five hundred dollars a month. It equates to a little over a hundred thousand dollars a year. What is it gross? A million two. What is it net? Six fifty. What is it net after debt service? Approximately 550. That's no brainer. How much is this guy making right now? He's doing sixty thousand dollars a month of doctor production. Times twelve, seven twenty. He's making approximately two hundred. Now he's going to be making close to five. The no brainer. Absolutely no brainer. And so this is an example of you know how it helps somebody buy this and try to buy this as soon as possible. We can incorporate the doctor work back in this practice. We certainly want to look at the building. You know this thing as well. Um, you know, so this is this is a no-brainer for us to try to purchase. Now, this is a building scenario, and we're just about wrapped up uh, here. But you know, six hundred thousand uh, dollar practices for sale. Uh, you know, nets two forty. Uh, my valuation in this example is roughly seventy percent. So that's fine. You net one eighty after the debt service, and we discussed that. So can you do this? You know, a six months or eight months uh, experience. Yes, you can do the work on that. You make 180 and you live on that? Yes, this makes perfect sense. I, I like this. Next question is, do you buy the building? And sometimes the young buyer says, I don't want to buy the building, Charles. I'm already $400,000 in debt. And, and plus, I'm, you know, I, I have a dental school debt of $400,000. And, and, and Charles, I'm buying a, a new house. Um, you know, that's going to be $300,000. Now, all of a sudden, I'm over a million. I, just, I don't want to buy this building. Well, either A, you can uh, give the guy who just sold you the practice 3700 bucks a month and not own anything in 10 years, or B, borrow um, $300,000 and finance it, and with estimated uh, taxes and insurance, basically pay you know, 2600 bucks a month. It, to me, it's a no-brainer. You're saving $1,100, number one, and number two, have built the equity in the business, in this case, the building, um, over this 10-year period, this is a no-brainer, and this this example uh, as well is you're taking the equal amount of risk because if you default on a a lease, you're you're probably defaulting somewhere on this business and probably defaulting on you know a lot of other things as well if the dental practice fails. But does the dental practice fail? In general, they don't. That's why banks and corporate love uh, dentistry is because uh, the success uh, that you have. So. What are the four main reasons that we really want to become a business owner? Number one, we talked about it, twice as much money as the owner. In general, that, that stands true. Certainly for a couple of examples that I gave today, uh, that, will, that will certainly hold true. Number two, we're going to build equity in the business. People don't talk about that very much, but the million dollar practice that we buy or we build, in the future, it's worth something. It's worth what? 
seventy percent approximately. So it's a seven hundred thousand dollar asset that's on our um, that's on our books. Now that you own the business, you have the ability to save in a pension plan, and not just eighteen thousand dollars, but seventy thousand dollars. You're getting huge tax deductions. And number four is we have the ability as a small business owner to tax plan, and that's where we're going to start really being um, smart about what we're running through our business. Then as the employee, you don't get the same uh, treatment for running all the things uh, through the business, you know, from, from CE to, to travel to maybe, you know, automobile when that's appropriate, spouse when appropriate. Again, I, the pension plan is all part of the tax, the tax plan. So those are really the four main points that I always try to make when I'm discussing the benefit of um, you know, owning uh, owning the business. So NDP is a is a subsidiary of of Kane Waters, and so it helps with uh, uh, practice listings and uh, practice valuations and, and buyer consultant as it relates to young buyers. Uh, seller transition consulting. We help you know maybe a senior doctor says, hey, I got this guy, got this gal, and uh, I'm trying to. Uh, create a plan, so I just don't know how to do it. But we hope, you know, basically put two people on the phone and design a plan before we're ever engaged of what we see as the vision. If the two people agree, then we will work with both of them. If you, uh, if there's a broker involved, you need someone to represent. There's a broker involved in basically representing the seller, and you need some help, you know, on your buyer's end. We work for you. We do practice valuations as well. So that's. Our goal with NDP being, uh, you know, same ownership, you know, as uh, as Kane Waters, is this: we got to get you to own, and then hopefully we get you introduced to Kane Waters at that point. Now that you own it, and then now hopefully we can help you over a really long period of time, which is the tax planning, the pension planning, all the things that uh, we have uh, discussed discussed here. So. Um, Let's see. That about wraps it up. I, I, I can't tell you enough uh, how much I appreciate um, your attention. Uh, we certainly want to be beyond just a voice. We want to be a, a support uh, for you. Uh, motivational coaching calls. Hey, I'm going to go on an interview. You know, what do you think I should be asking for? Hey, I got some information. Not sure what what your initial you know thoughts uh, are and on this. Um, uh, we don't just want to be a voice. We want to be a, a support system to uh, to the Crown Council and, and to that uh, uh, community. And so, um, again, Greg, I, I really appreciate uh, your um, opportunity to allow you know our our team to uh, to support your your team. And uh, just again, thank you so much for the invitation today. Thank you, Charles. I, I would say these two things. First. Um, you don't know what you don't know. And uh, your presentation, I'm sure, to, to somebody who, who is not familiar with the numbers is a little bit like a, like a drink from a fire hose. You know, you want to know more, and you're trying to gulp it in as fast as you can, and, and it's not all there. And one of the things that Charles has so kindly agreed to do is to allow each of you as a young dentist of the Crown Council to contact uh, him and they will put you through a complimentary review of where you are and, and what the possibilities are to give you a more in-depth look at your personal situation. And like I said at the beginning, um, having a great financial advisor as part of your team is really a critical component so that you're not uh, 60 years old and trying to find out now how to save enough money so that you can quit doing what you're doing and and uh, transition yourself out of dentistry. So, Charles, we appreciate your time, and we You're appreciate welcome. especially this uh, great opportunity for a complimentary review. You're welcome to call the number that's on here or contact us at the Crown Council, and we'll put you right in touch with Charles. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, welcome. Had a great time. Thank you so much as well.